Okay, so this is problem number nine from chapter 13. And the section is on applications, circuit applications. So um, we have a circuit that looks like we have a three amp independent sur um, current source here in parallel with a 50 ohm resistor. And that is in para, um, there's a switch here and a capacitor here. 625 nanofarads at time. When time um, starts, the switch flips over and energizes a 5K in series with a 2.5 Henry inductor. And for part A, we're looking for the S domain circuit. And for part B, we're looking for the voltage that V out in the S domain, expresses as the S domain. And for part C, we're looking for the time the V out in the time domain. So let's get started. We have a switch. That means we have to consider initial conditions. So a mistake would be to say that, well, this 3 amp is going to just go in a loop here, or the capacitor is an open. The capacitor is an open. So a mistake in logic would be to say, the capacitor is an open in DC, and therefore this 3 amp will go in the loop, and there will be a 3 uh, amp source, or, or, um, or there will be no current across here, or no, vol no voltage across there. That would be a mistake. We have to source, do a source transformation to see what that voltage or that uh, capacitor is charged to. And so when you do the source transformation, you have 3 amps in parallel, right? We have 3 amps. That's in parallel with 50. And so that's going to source transform into minus plus, right? The head of the arrow gets the plus. The tail of the arrow gets the minus. That's going to be 150 volts. And that's going to be in series with the 50. And now we can say that the capacitor is open in DC and it will receive 150 uh, volts of charge. Now, we all have our idiosyncrasies. Mine is, I hate seeing the minus on top. I hate that. So I always do negative 150 volts plus minus. That's my little OCD. So now that I know, I'm going to park that value right here, negative 150 volts. Um, I'm going to park that there and draw the S, rest of the S domain. Now we know what that is. And um, so there's, so now we need to uh, do the S domain transformation for the capacitor, 1 over SC. And this is where we do the plus of the little voltage, right? and um, the initial voltage. So, and then we need to S transform the 2.5 Henry's, and that's LS. So our circuit, there's two possibilities. You can do it because of source transformation. There's two possible answers. I chose to do source transformation. Therefore, my answer is gonna be the plus minus 150. And don't forget, we have to represent the switch. Negative 150, so this is actually negative 150 over S because the switching happens here. And then that's going to be in series with the 50 ohm resistor. And that's going to be in series with the capacitor, which has value SC. Actually, I just called it. Oh, 1 over SC, and I never actually did the calculation. So, so escape. 1 divided by, 1 divided by 625, E minus 9. So this is going to be 1.6 E6 over S. And then over here, we have 5K. And then over here, LS is, LS 
is 2.5s. 2.5s. So that is my circuit in the S domain. And I think it's pretty cool because now it's just a series circuit. And it's all, every, all that information is incorporated here. I think that's really cool. So, now that I have all these values, I'm going to replace that circuit. Well, curses, I just don't have enough space. Anyways, I'm going to erase this because I don't have space. And now we need to do the uh, part B. So, we did part one. Now, part B is to find the, um, the voltage across the inductor at, um, um, at time, uh, the voltage drop across the inductor, so in the S domain, and that's just a simple voltage divider circuit because everything was all in series. And in fact, the S domain is going to be is going to be the one that I'm going to put back up here. So I had plus minus negative 150 over S because we had a switching, and then over here we had. 50, and then here we have 1.6 E7, um, 1.6 E6, E6 over S, and then here, and that's the rest of the circuit, and that's just 2.5 S. Okay, so now, we, if we want to measure that, that's very simple. It's a voltage divider circuit, so we need the impedance here, which we know is to be 2.5 S, divided by the total impedance. So we need to find the impedance of this. And then we'll multiply it by our voltage, which is the negative one, um, 150 um, over S. Okay, let's find the total impedance, because that's really easy. Um, well, it's really easy. Harry algebra, but algebra is easy. So plus 1.6 E6 over S plus 5,000 plus 2.5 S. And that's it. Everything is missing in S, and we need to combine everything into a common denominator. So then that just becomes um, these two are going to come together to be, um, let me see. Oh, sorry, you guys. I put the 50 there, but actually the 50, once the switching closed, remember, once the switching happened, we disconnected from the 50. That was just carelessness on my part once I saw that. Um, so now we don't have a 50 anymore, so we just have 1.6 E, E6 over S, and then so if we put everything over S, then this will be S, and this will be 25 S squared. Great, that's our total impedance. So this is total impedance. Now, we need to do a voltage divider circuit, which means we're going to take this impedance, divide it by this, and then multiply by this. Well, when you divide by a fraction, all it does is flip it around. So that's what that means to divide by a fraction. So this, this in the denominator becomes S over 1.6E6. I'm going to put polynomial. This is another OCD thing. All my polynomials have to be highest order first. So 25 s squared plus 5,000 s plus 1.6 e6. 1.6 e. 1.6 e6. And that's going to be times 2.5 s. So that when you multiply 2.5s here, that just becomes 2.5s squared. So, let me make sure. Oh, what was I doing? Never mind. The, the, this is why these things, I make mistakes because these little things. I was just, that's a denominator, right? So that's the denominator. Now... So we divide this by the denominator, which means we multiply 2.5. So this becomes 2.5s squared. That's the ratio. So what this number is, is in the S domain, it is the voltage divider circuit proportion. So it's this impedance divided by total impedance. 
and yes. Okay, so now multiply by 150, negative 150, will give us the um, voltage in the S domain. But remember, we, and by we, I mean me, we are OCD, so we divide through by the highest power. But I have a mistake somewhere. Ah, oh, man, I hate this. I get it right on paper, and then I verify it, and then I have a typo somewhere, and then it drives me crazy. This is, should be 2.5. Yes. It's 3. Okay, now I'm good. Okay, so... Okay, so now... We always get rid of the, um, let's, let's come back to the, the multiplying by the voltage because we're not done yet, we have work to do. So we always get the highest power in the denominator to one. And that is because tables of inverse Laplace transform are expressed in that way. So we're gonna go multiply top and bottom by one over 2.5. One over 2.5. And that's just multiplying by one. And when we do that, you should get s squared over s squared plus 2,000 s plus 640,000. Okay, now, now we are ready to multiply by negative 150, and that becomes very simple. And that will give us our uh, voltage. Right, so our V out in the S domain, V out of S is negative 150 S squared all over, and we always leave this in factor form because to go back into the time domain always requires partial fraction expansion. This is S plus 400 S minus, or plus 1600. And that is the answer for part B. Part C, part C is going back into the time domain. So we're going to find the voltage drop across the inductor in the time domain. Well, this is equal to, that is exactly equal to some value A over S plus 400 plus some value B over S plus 1600. And I'm not going to do the full partial fraction expansion. If you need that lesson, it's in chapter 12. And the reason I'm not going to do it is because I hate doing partial fraction expansion. For real roots, it's very easy. A is equal to negative 150 S over S plus 1600 evaluated at S equals negative 400. B is negative 150 S over S plus 400 evaluated at S equals negative 1600. When you do that, you will come up with 50 and over here, negative 200. So, Going back to our inverse Laplace transform tables, then we should see easily that this is negative, or this is 50. This is one that is, you should know by heart because it's so easy. This is 50 raised to the e to the minus 400t. This is uh, minus 200e to the negative 1600t. So our voltage, um, volt V out of t is... 50e to the negative 400t plus 50 or minus 200e to the minus 400 16 to the minus 1600 e to the minus 1600t volts. And I have a horrible habit of forgetting to put the u of t, but the u of t is a switching function, and all that that says is that is that function is valid for time greater than zero. 
So, since I haven't figured out how to travel back in time, it's always in my mind that time is greater than zero. So, um, anyways, don't for, you guys shouldn't forget about it, though. Another way you could say times u of t is just to say for t pods for time greater than zero. Um, please remember that if this video helped you and you got free help, please help me out by liking the Facebook page and sharing this link.